Let's start 10.4 with a question. Um, so you're going to pick a card out of 52 cards, and the question is, what's the probability you get a face card? Um, well, how many ways are there to get a face card over how many ways are there to get a card? Um, there's three face cards for each suit and four suits, so 12 ways to get a face card out of 52. And this will simplify down to 3 out of 13. Three face cards in each suit, 13 cards in each suit. Um, now, what we've actually done with, you know, really quickly, we have done what we're trying to learn in this section without even really thinking about it. Because when you thought face card, you thought, um, oh, jack, or queen, or king, okay? And this word or will become um, uh, very familiar to you as we go through more of these. Um, to get a face card, you, any of these will do. Jack or queen or king, any of them will do. And so you just think, well, I'll take however many jacks there are, how many queens there are, and how many kings there are, and add it all together. Um, so there's four of these, and four of these, and four of these. And since any of them will do, this or this, you know, so there's, I have four ways uh, that I can be successful, and another four ways that I can be successful, and another four ways that I can be successful, um, and that's a total of 12. Now we did do the math a little bit differently to find this 12, but, you know, in our heads we knew that this was perfectly acceptable to say jack or queen or king. We knew that was what face card means, uh, and we just added them all together, because any of those that we get, if we get anything in here, jack, queen, or king, um, then we are successful. We win. So there's 12 total. And then we say, well, okay, then, you know, 12 out of 52. That's it. Um, and so what we're trying to establish in this section is, if we want to know the probability of a face card, um, or the probability of, of anything in the form of, say, probability of this or that, um, then we can just add the probabilities together. Okay, It's just the probability of this plus the probability of that. Or in the case of face cards, the probability of this face card plus the probability of this face card plus the probability of this face card. 4 out of 52 4 out of 52, 4 out of 52, and that's 12 out of 52, and then we just simplify it to 3 out of 12, or 3 out of 13, okay? So that's it, that's what we're trying to establish here, is that if you have this or distinction in here, or, or any other word that means that either this can happen or that can happen, then we just add their probabilities together, because whether this happens or that happens, you're successful. Your experiment is is a success, um, and it just you know it broadens your horizons. It 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 makes your pool of successes bigger. So we're just going to add everything together. Now here's the thing, a little bit of a trick here. So let's let's say we want the probability of a face card, or um, a, a heart. So the probability of a face card or a heart. Okay, so we think, okay, so whether we get a face card or we get a heart, we're successful, we win. So we'll just say probability of a face card plus probability of a heart. So what's the probability of a face card? Um, we already talked about it. It's, let's just do 12 out of 52. What's the probability of a heart? It's 13, 13 hearts out of 52 cards. So just add those together, right? So um, 25 out of... 52, and they don't have any factors in common, so that's it, 25 out of 52. Um, but here's the, the issue that you may not realize. Um, this probability is actually too high. Um, and, you know, take a moment and think about why that might be. Why would this probability be too high? Because if we actually counted them out, uh, face cards or hearts. What we would do, okay, so here's here's where we're counting out the face cards. Okay, so K, 
counting out the face cards here. And then when we go to count out the hearts, what we'll find is a little bit of overlap. Right? If we just go through and count face cards, which we did here, and then we go through and count heart cards, just completely forgetting that we've already counted face cards, what are we going to do? We're going to count three cards twice. We'll count the king of hearts and the queen of hearts. This is really small, but that's what I'm writing. Jack of hearts. Now over here, there's the king of spades, the queen of diamonds, and so forth. All the other um, face cards that aren't hearts. And over here, there's all these hearts, like the five of hearts and the seven of hearts and the ace of hearts. All these hearts that aren't face cards. But right in the middle are these uh, cards that are face cards and hearts at the same time. And if we just count these, and then we count these, and we add them together, we'll be counting these twice. We'll be taking this guy here with this little middle section, and we'll be adding this guy here. So what have we done? Now we have... Uh, now we've added this little middle section twice. What we would need to do is take one of those middle sections away. We only want uh, this entire thing, right? This, um, this entire shape here. And all the stuff in here, and the stuff in here, and all the stuff in here, and no more and no less. If we add just the face cards plus the heart cards, we'll have this little middle section twice. And we can't do that. That's, that's too much. So we'll take one of those middle parts away, and what we'll get is just what we wanted. One little crescent thing, one little crescent thing over here, and the little middle section. So that's what we need to do up here. So let's get rid of this. Uh, right, so here is the this thing here. This is all the face cards. Here's all the heart cards. And then we take away the probability that we get a face and a heart card at the same time. Well, we just established that that's 3 out of 52. 3 cards out of 52 are hearts and face cards. And we counted 3 of them here, right here. There's 3 of these 12 are the king, queen, and jack of hearts. And 3 of these 13 are the king, queen, jack of hearts. We counted them twice, so we're going to take away one of those sets of 3. So that would be left with the correct amount. So let's see, we get uh, this is 10, so 22 out of 52, 11 out of uh, 26, that'll do it, 11 out of 26. So here, in the example of a face card, uh, it's really what we're, our brain is telling us is the definition of a face card is jack or queen or king. Well, you can't have a jack and a queen at the same time, in the same card, in the same one card. Um, so n none of these will intersect. If we were to draw one of these diagrams, they wouldn't overlap at all. So um, this is what we call um, disjoint. Okay, It's disjoint because it's not joint. This would be joint, and that's not what this is. This is not joint. It's disjoint. Okay, uh, These ones here when we look at face cards and heart cards, uh, we find an overlap here, so we call them overlapping. These are overlapping events. So with disjoint events, we can just add the probabilities together, and um, it'll all work out great. Uh, with overlapping events, though, say uh, A and B. Let's say A and B are events. So, and we want the probability of A or B. And this is what we just did. So we'll take the probability of A and add the probability of B. But since they overlap, we've counted something twice. So we'll just take the probability that they happen at the same time. Okay. So in this example, the probability, or the, an example of them happening at the same time is getting a king of hearts, because you get a king and a heart at the same time in the same card. And there you go. With disjoint events, the probability of A or B is just the probability of A plus the probability of B. And since they don't overlap and we didn't count anything twice, we don't have to take anything away. So that's just it. Okay. So this is kind of a special case of, of this 
quote formula where the, the middle section just doesn't exist. Right? If we were to draw a picture of jack or queen or king, it would look like here's the jacks and here's the queens and here's the kings and they don't overlap. All right. Um, there's one last little thing in this section that we're going to cover. And to talk about that last thing, let's think about rolling two dice. And uh, let's just think about this real quick. What's the probability that we get... Uh, we're going we're gonna to roll two dice and add them together. So what's the probability we get less than 10? We roll two dice, and the sum of the two dice is less than 10. Okay. Um, well, let's... Let's set something up here. Um, this is our event. Let's say that's you know we call it event A, the probability of the thing we want to happen. Okay. Now, either the thing that we want to happen happens or it doesn't. Right? Isn't that right? Um, either we get a number that's less than ten or we don't. We get a number that's ten or more. Or yeah, ten or more. Um, so. Either it happens or it doesn't. Nothing can happen outside of that. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And there's no other possibility. Okay. So the probability of A plus the probability of... And I'll write this. This means we read this probability of the complement of A. A probability of A complement. Or the word complement is the important part here. Okay, this little line over it tells us complement, and that means that A doesn't happen. So you've got the probability of A and the probability that A doesn't happen. How much will that be? What's the probability that either the, the thing happens or it doesn't? Well, that's 100%, or 1. It's definitely one of these things is going to happen. Either the thing we want happens or it doesn't. Okay. Um, so what we can do to find the probability of A, the thing we want to happen, is take away the probability that it does not happen from 1. Right? Take the, it, the entire everything that could possibly happen, take away the probability that what we want to happen uh, doesn't, right? So take what we, the probability that our thing doesn't happen away from all of the, the possible things, all of the probability, and we must find uh, the probability that our thing does happen, right? So, what we can do here is say, we'll take 1 minus the probability of 10 or more. Alright? Um, and why is the reason we would want to do that? Let's, let's look at how many ways, or what, what's the probability of getting 10 or more? Um, well, we could get 6 plus 6, and that'd be 12. We could do 6 plus 5, or 5 plus 6. And those would both be 11. We could do 6 plus 4, 4 plus 6, or 5 plus 5, and all of those would be 10. Okay. So, how many ways are there to get 10 or more? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 ways to get 10 or more. Um, so, that actually that answers the question of why would we do it this way? Because to count all the ways there are to get ten or to get less than ten it would take quite a bit longer than this. Right, we'd have to count the ways there are to get nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, and two. That's just that's a lot more than just this right here. Um, so what we want, the probability of less than ten, is equal to one minus the probability of ten or more. So we know there's six ways to get ten or more. Out of how many ways are there to roll two dice? Well, you got a die here and a die here. There's six ways to roll this one and six ways to roll this one. This is section 10.1 here, fundamental counting principle. There's 36, way, 36 ways to roll two dice. So six out of 36, or one minus one sixth. Um, so one minus one sixth is five sixths. So that is the probability of less than 10. Okay, so that is the idea of a complement. When the thing that you want, when the probability that you want, would take a lot of counting and a lot of brain power. Um, maybe counting the complement would take less time, and we'll just subtract that from 1. Okay, so we'll put that all to use in the sample problems video. Thanks for watching.